My name is One Mind Dogs instructor Stephanie Williams. Welcome to my webinar on wonderful weave poles. Today we'll cover five steps, um, five important topics to help us develop an easy approach um, to training weave poles and training weave poles that we are um, that we that we imagine that we envision as like the the truly independent performance that that wows everybody, the most wonderful weaves that you can think of. Um, and those five steps are starting with foundations. So foundations are very important. Um, they are the basis on which we build the house of weave pole training, and we want a strong foundation for that. So we'll be discussing what that looks like today. Entrances, of course, um, exits, distractions, and then finally distance. And I think sometimes like particularly distance and also maybe some distractions can feel a bit challenging to think about um, in terms of training and also when you're actually in a trial. So hopefully today, um, we'll help you feel a little bit better about that. Um, and of course, our approach to weave pole training is based on the One Mind Dogs method, which is all about the dog's perspective. And One Mind Dogs method originated from our founder, Janita Leinenen, when her dog lost her hearing. And so all of the, our approach to both handling and training are all based on that. So we're always thinking of what the dog's perspective is. Um, and you'll see today, hopefully, some new ways of helping the dog understand what what it is to weave, what it is to find an entry um, in a way that's super clear to them. Details about how you reward them that make it really clear from their perspective. Um, but the most important thing we can remember are these wise words from Janita, which are that if weave pole training is fun and exciting, your dog will love to weave. And you'll hear more about that as we go through today too. But added, your attitude is everything when, we come, when it comes to weave pole training. So smile, make it fun, have fun with it yourself, um, and that will have a huge impact on your weave pole training with your dog. All right, let's get into foundations. So all of our agility training starts with foundations. And these are the little exercises that we do in order to help our dog first understand um, what it is that we're teaching. And many of us in weave pole foundation training take the approach of, I need to teach my dog the action of weaving, right? So how to like move through the poles, stay in the poles. And we're very focused on that aspect. And I think it's also really important to remember that all of your skills are taught in foundations. So that does include the, the stuff that we kind of think as more challenging. So for example, entrances and exits. So if, if in foundation training, you take the time to teach your dog how to make the more challenging entrances, um, and as well as how to stay in the poles with various exits, different types of handling, so front crosses and rear crosses and blind crosses, your speed, your position, so particularly that you're ahead of the dog, that you're behind the dog. So can your dog weave ahead of you? That gets taught in foundations, rear crosses, distance, and also distractions. And if we're teaching all of that on two poles or in channels or in weave then it's much easier for the dog and also feels, I think, easier for us as the trainer later on when we are teaching these or, or practicing these same things on six or 12 poles because the dog is already familiar with it. And then there is nothing that feels difficult because they've already done it. And so that can be super helpful when we're doing foundation training and developing independent weaves. Now, with all agility training, anytime you notice there is maybe a hole in the training, so something is like missing a skill or not quite working the way we want it to, we, we say always go back to foundations. And the same is true for weave pulls. So if you're noticing that your dog is struggling to understand a particular entry or struggling to stay in the poles when you're handling front crosses or so forth on the poles, go back to foundations. You can teach those things on four poles or two poles or on channels or so on. And so you can help your dog that way, understand them. Now today, I will also show you other ways to, to uh, train those things, but it's never wrong to go back to foundations. In fact, that's a great thing to do. Okay, so we'll be looking at all these little details. Um, there are many methods to teach weave poles, just like anything else. The most commonly used ones are two by twos. You may be familiar with where it starts with just two poles and we add um, from there two more and two more. 
and put them together. Channels are another really popular one. And you'll see examples of those in the videos I'm going to show you today. They're really great for puppies because you can have open channels and your puppy doesn't have to weave, but just run straight through, which is really awesome. Um, guide wires are really helpful. So wires that like you can buy that you can just attach to the poles. Um, and also we have weave matics that you'll see as well. Those are the ones that start like this and close down that you'll, you will see. Um, and of course, any of these methods can also be combined and that can really, really help because sometimes one way is not, um, not enough to help the dog understand from their perspective. So for example, if you take channels and add guide wires, then sometimes you can really help them have the dog have that light bulb moment so that they understand, okay, this is what I'm doing. And it makes things much easier. And you'll see lots of examples of that today as well. Um, all right, let's keep on going. But before we actually watch those videos and take a look at the examples of foundation training that I'm going to show you, it's important to talk about rewarding. And that, that starts, of course, from foundations and continues through weave pole training and agility training. How do we reward? What do we use? Where does it go? And so on. So the what, when, and where of rewarding and starting with value. So this idea of what kind of reward are you using for your dog that they love? So what is it that's going to like make their face light up, make them really, really excited to work? And oftentimes I hear um, students will say to me that, oh, like my dog really likes this treat or, or something like that. And I usually encourage you to go beyond that and find what is it that they love most. So what is it that they will work for? Because we want them to associate weave pole training with that thing. So if it is their favorite toy in the world, is it like the most um, high value food you can find? So like meat and bits of meatball or chicken or something like that, that they will really, really love. Um, so think of that value. And then of course, timing is really important. We know that dogs um, think that they are being rewarded for the last thing they did. So that right now, you are correct right now is always what we're telling the dog when they're being rewarded. And many times weave pole training goes that the dog weaves and then they come back to the handler and then they get the reward. And if we really think about dog training and that timing under those circumstances, the last thing the dog did was come back to the handler. And so that's what's getting rewarded there mostly. Yes, it, it's a little bit of a chain from weaves to recall basically, but the strongest thing that's getting rewarded is coming back to you. So try to um, find the easiest way for you to be able to throw your reward so that it lands at the end of the weave. So if you're using six poles, throw that reward where we pull seven would be. Or if you're using 12, where would we pull 13 be? And that reward, if it lands there, and if it feels from the dog's point of view that that reward is landing from the sky, not coming from you, then they will associate the reward with the weaves themselves. And that has a huge impact. So that's one of the ways that we can really make them love to weaves and develop that independence. Um, and so we've talked about placement. Where would the next weave pole be? The last thing to mention with rewarding, and I think this one gets forgotten a lot too, is praise. How does your dog love to be praised? Are they a softer dog who likes quiet praise or are they, um, do they like big um, cheerleady type praise? Whatever it is, use that while your dog is weaving because praise is a reward we can give any time. Um, and including during competition. So you can reward your dog for weaving by saying, hey, that's amazing, great dog, or however they like to be praised and really help give them an extra boost while they're weaving. And many times I hear that, oh, my dog pops the poles when I speak while they are weaving. Well, if you praise from foundations, you've already taken care of that. And it's a first, the first little bit of distraction training you can already do. So, so much benefit to all of that. Um, but again, remember, as we've said before, attitude is everything. So make we pull training fun. Think of it like a brain game that you and your dog are playing together, where it's not that we're doing something challenging or difficult, but hey, we're just doing this little puzzle and I'm going to make it rewarding. And I'm going to be super proud of you, my dog, when you when you do this thing, this we pull thing that we're doing. And they really will respond to that. All right, good. So now we'll take a look at one of my favorite concepts of foundation training and obstacle focus training, which is offering. And you may have seen this in our foundations program with, on a jump or a tunnel where we, um, we set up a training scenario where the dog figures out that by going to the obstacle by themselves, so to speak, that we've kind of set it up that way, that they will get rewarded for that. 
And then they figure out that I can do this all by myself and they it built, uh, boost their confidence and eventually leads to speed because they like to be able to do things all, all on their own and they like to figure out the answer to a puzzle. They like to learn new things. So all of these things build confidence, independence, and fun. Um, so it's great to start with offering. And this is great for dogs of all ages because little puppies can do this offering too, as you'll see. So in the example that I'm gonna show you, um, you'll see this with channels. Um, and as well as with um, weave -a and we can do them um, both ways. So uh, actually, we'll come back to that slide in a moment. But let's start with this one. And I want you, as you watch this video, to look for the moment when the puppy actually starts to offer themselves. So it begins with a lure, right? And you see that there are guide wires and nets on this set of weave -a um, and a little bowl to lure the puppy to help them to first to understand what we're doing right so we have to we do have to kind of start there when it comes to weave pole training but that's okay because you'll see as we just play this fun game of run back and forth between the this set of weave with the puppy that the puppy will begin to make these choices on on her own instead of like being placed in front of the weaves and instead of needing a lure that she'll start to just go what if i just go in there all by myself and that's what the offering is so a little bit of help from the handler there but not much and the pup went into the weaves and you can see how fast she's already starting to go with this just little game of go back and forth through this little channel that we've made so let's let's keep watching and you'll see even more there again maybe a little bit of help from the handler but um no gesturing no cueing just some maybe positional help and that's kind of it and there that one really nice offering there where the pup just just goes again okay Let's, let's see what happens. Let them think about it. And there you go, all by themselves. So that's a, a really nice example of what offering looks like. And as they start to offer, then we can start to add in a little bit of um, trainings like handler motion and position and that kind of thing, okay? Okay, so that's offering. Now, when we're training foundations, um, and I'll show you another example of offering in a moment, but when we're training foundations, we start with that offering and then we introduce our skills. OK, so entries are one that we can start to add in as you are doing that just easy open channel offering. And then we can progress from there to exits. We can do handling. We can. So, for example, front cross, rear cross, blind cross, um, handler speed, distractions distance all of that during that first phase and you can add just one skill at a time as you're going through with your foundation sessions um, and keep your sessions really short so a few minutes here a few minutes there and then as you start to see that you've had a chance to introduce these little skills then you can progress with the actual weaving so close down the channels bit by bit or add the next set of pulls but let's take another look at this idea of offering so this one will be with channels and here you can see an open broad channel okay so how nice for a puppy that they can just run straight through there and the nets that are on here you'll see a lot during today's presentation these are just garden fence that you can get from your hardware store that are just very soft um, really easy flexible easy to work with nets and so as you go through and you narrow narrow the channel gradually as you're working on um, those other little skills all right so that's that is the concept of offering And when you are, are working on weave pole training, just like any other behavior that we teach, whether it is obedience behaviors or it is agility stuff, the more that we can take that quote unquote on the road, so get away from home and train in different places, the better. So um, transport your weave poles to the park or go to the training center um, and so on. And we can help the dog to understand that weaves are still weaves no matter what environment you're in. And that goes a really long way to um, trialing and tr um, with them and competing. But let's go on to look at entrances now. Um, entrances too can can feel challenging if we don't um, teach them during foundations. But if you take that right from the beginning, then I think that for the dog and the handler, it is much, much easier. OK, so when training entrances, we can use once you are, um, are past foundations and your dog is already weaving, you can go back, of course, to foundations again to train entrances. You can also use aids like guide wires, nets 
and also pre-placed rewards. So these are all really handy to just kind of help direct the dog's path to find that entrance or to pre-place the reward to act as a lure to find the entrance. These all really, really help. Um, so these little training aids are great to have on hand. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can use a pre-placed reward to help a dog find what might be considered a pretty challenging entry. All right, so lots of speed, a pretty much a 90 degree weave pull entry there. Handler is running really fast. And so that, that can be considered a bit more challenging. But first you'll see here, at first we take the speed away and you'll see often that introduction of the opposite arm to help with that kind of entry. That's another way that you can handle the entry is by lifting that arm, points the chest laser there. But here you'll see that Tulia will place a reward right between the first two gaps. And this is gonna help the dog to locate the entry first so that we can first take care of that so that they know where they're going. All right, and so we do it once, maybe we'll do it one more time to just really help them. And just between the first two gaps, maybe just a bit beyond it. So it's first starting without handler speed and then adding the speed back in. And still the handler helps with opposite arm, but the um, pre-placed reward helps the dog to find the entry, just to clarify it for them from their perspective so that it's a bit easier. And now we'll go on and see, do we get the entry? All right, so again, taking out some of the speed to give the dog a chance to, to try and she makes it, right? So pre-placed rewards can be super helpful. Um, and in addition to that, we mentioned also nets and guide wires, and these are also great tools. And you can, they're kind of hard to see, but you can see there that there are guide wires to help with both the entry and then also the exit to just help this pup um, to stay in the poles. All right, and then the next one, you can see here another example. So now handling this entry from the other side and we'll see how Tulia here uses guide wires and also nets to really help this dog to be able to get load in and stay in. So here using those tools um, to help the dog to manage their body, manage their speed, collect, and kind of also still guide the nose where to go. All right, so first guide wires. And here we'll introduce guide wires for just managing that first, the first two gaps. All right, and you can see he thinks about it a little bit, but he's able to make his way in. And, and we, do, we do want that. We want them to think about how to manage their body, find the entry and load in. And a little bit of extra help again with the net. So the nets and guide wires together all often um, are a really great way to go um, in terms of helping the dog to understand from their point of view, how to make it into the poles, what to do with their body. And of course there'll be handling to help with it too, but this is just a bit looking at how we can train those, those types of entries. Now, of course, we also need to, as the handler, help with that as well. So our job as the handler when handling entries to weave holes is that we want to support the first three gaps when we're looking at, for example, that kind of 90 degree entry or the one like in this picture where if I am staying there, supporting that rather than just running onward, you can help the dog to collect their body and manage their speed and load in. So we can help kind of handle those first three gaps that way and make sure that they're able to get in pretty easily. Make sure you, your dog can see the weaves. This is one of the most common reasons um, that I see for dogs to miss entries is that the handler thinks about shaping the poles. And I'll show you an example of this from the dog's point of view. Um, so shaping the approach as opposed to letting the dog find and, and make the entry independently. And so then we end up blocking the weaves instead of making sure from the dog's point of view that they can see what to commit to. So you'll see that in a moment. Connection, watch your dog. So keep your eyes on your dog at all times. This is one of those, uh, um, another really more common reason why dogs miss weave pole entries is because the handler looks at the weaves 
rather than the dog. And so then the dog will go, hey, I need my connection back and they'll look at you and then they miss the wheeze. So make sure you, you are keeping the connection. And then there, we also have a handling technique called grab to weaves, which I'll show you a little bit of, where if you can be ahead. So for example, the handler in this photo is doing one version of grab to weaves. If you can be there, let's help. And we can help with grab to weaves. It's those times when we can't make it, like in the video examples I just showed you, where we just are not gonna be able to beat our dog um, and get ahead there, that we want them to also have their skills of independence in the weave poles. Um, but let's take a look at this. And this is not actually, this is just a slow motion demo um, of what it can look like. So imagine you're the dog and you're about to take off for that jump. If the handler is trying to shape the entry, and so there the bar is placed as an example of the dog's line. If the handler is trying to shape this entry, then the handler ends up blocking and ends up on the dog's line. Whereas instead, if you are one step away from the dog's line, you can see how the dog is easily able to see the poles as opposed to if you're trying to shape the entry, you end up blocking them. Okay, and so here it's really helpful to remember that dogs can only commit to what they can see. And so we should be choosing our position as the handler so that they can easily see that. Um, here is an example of what grab to weaves looks like. There's four versions of grab to weaves based on the approach of the dog and the position of the handler. But these are, if you can be in position, you can help handle these. And these you can find on the One Mind Dogs website, um, how to train them, how to handle them. Um, there's an entire course that's all about grab to weaves. But they're just a few examples of how we can help if we can be there. And if I can be ahead and I'm in a competition and get there and help, I will. It's the times when I can't that I need my dog to also have the skills. All right, so four examples of how you can perform grab to weaves based on the dog's approach to the weaves and the handler position. So is the handler on the same side of the poles as the dog or the opposite side? All right, moving to exits. So we help train our wee pole exits, which might mean a straight exit or an angled exit. And we also need our dogs to understand to stay in the poles, whether we are far away or are we doing handling, like running on the dog's line or blind cross or front cross of the end of the poles that they need to understand to stay in. And those um, reward concepts that we mentioned in foundations is still really important here, that, that when we are rewarding, Reward, reward so the dog is looking forward at what would be the next pull, okay? And reward as if that, drop that reward as if it landed from the sky. So that's the timing we're aiming for. Um, you can also work with pre-placed rewards. So a manners minder, for example, or a bowl are great, or a pre-placed toy. We just wanna make sure that we transition from pre-placed to drop so that we're not always luring, just like you would um, not always hold the cookie to teach a sit, we would fade that lure. Same with teaching weave poles, okay? Guide wires and nets also, again, really help you. You can, pre you can put them on the ends of the poles as you saw in the previous video, but here's another example of how we can do that. And you'll see here a bit of distance training as well. All right, so first attempt, handler's practicing distance training, so she can't make it there. So we have to help the dog understand to find the entrance. And then you'll also see how we help the dog to finish the poles. And the, the guide wires are super hard to see. So um, I'll actually mark right now where one, one of them gets placed right here. Okay, so a guide wire attached just to pole two and a reward placed right there so that we can help the dog first find the entry without the handler having to be there. Um, so that's another example of how you can use guide wires. So you don't even necessarily have to put them like attached to um, two poles. You can just do the one and just help guide the, guide the dog's gaze to where they should be looking. All right, and then again here now we get the entry. And then as the handler moves down the line, you can see that the dog does not finish the poles. Okay, so here's an example of how we can add guide wires and also a dropped reward from an assistant, which there's Yanita in the background um, and she's gonna drop a reward, but I'll first show you where the guide wire is because it's kind of hard to see. So the blue line, that's where the guide wire is attached. So again, just to help direct the dog's nose to stay in the poles and finish the weaves and then Yanita there drops the reward for the handler. So having an assistant to throw the reward can also be super helpful in terms of like um, 
reinforce and weave poles um, with a reward so that it doesn't have to be that you have always the best aim or if the timing is a little bit challenging or you just want the reward to not be on you but to come from somewhere else and that can be really great training so another example of how you can use those tools to help your dog understand what we're the what we're trying to get across with our training all right now when it comes to handling exits there are still ways that we can help the dog we mentioned connection when um, handling entries as they are weaving keep looking at them particularly as you're handling the exit now if we are blind crossing there is a momentary disconnect as you turn your head but um, beyond that we want to keep that connection because again dropping the connection to check where you're going one of the most common reasons dogs will pop out of weave poles and we i think we tend to kind of use the weave poles as a moment to kind of check and see what's coming next on the course watch your dog you'll really help them to stay in chest laser which that laser point coming from the center of your chest pointing ahead of you approximately five feet now if we're farther from the poles we can still point the chest laser at the dog um, or you can point the chest laser at the last pole and these will help your dog to stay in because chest laser really helps support them um, whether you're weaving parallel to them or you have to be far away. Um, and if you are um, moving away from the poles, so many times we load the dogs in close to the entry and then we use that moment to be able to move laterally away or diagonally away, keep your chest laser pointed to the dog as you're doing that. And also give thought to your line as you're moving away from the poles. If you go parallel and then turn, that also pulls them out. So plan to move diagonally away from the poles and point the chest laser, keep the connection, and chances are they stay in. Now also finishing handling before the dogs exit the poles, really, really important. So front crosses, blind crosses, running the dog's line. Um, your dog is going to plan what obstacle is coming next while they are in the poles. So if they see you moving forward while they're weaving and they reach that final pole, they think the next obstacle should be somewhere ahead of them. So make sure that you have finished the front cross before that last gap so that they know they're turning before they come out of the poles or blind cross or, or whatever it might be. And we might actually have to teach them that, hey, if I am doing handling on the weaves, your job is to still keep weaving. So that's a version of distraction training that you can do using guide wires and nets at first that we then fade out, okay? Now, of course, speaking of distractions, this is really important and I think often gets forgotten as well that when we're training weave poles, we, we think so much of like can finish the weaves. Um, and so we teach that. And then once they're weaving, then we put it in a sequence and then we try it in class. But it's really important from foundations forward to introduce different kinds of distractions and proof them to a high level. OK, so different types of distractions. Certainly, what are the distractions that we might encounter in a competition? So noises, dogs outside the ring, people in the ring. So ring crew, judge walking around, um, handling on the weave. So handler distractions might be that you are doing some front cross or blind cross, or it might be that you took a bad step. I did that once in a trial. My dog saved the poles. Um, so these are all little things that we can add in. Obstacles as distractions, a tunnel near the weaves, a jump near the weaves, particularly if those things are near the handler path, will be very distracting to dogs because they'll want to go to those as they see you get closer to them. Noises, of course, trials, trial environments and classroom environments can have those types of sounds that distract dogs, people, other dogs outside the ring, um, different environments. All of these are really great um, distraction opportunities to train. And as I mentioned, tr proof them to a high level. So go beyond what you think you would encounter in a trial so that your dog can, is so good at weaves, trials become easy then. It's, um, it's when we don't give them the opportunity to really like to, um, build that skill that when they have to do it under pressure in a trial, it can kind of feel a bit more challenging. But if they've practiced it in so many different ways and they have a lot of strong skill in training, trials then become easier because most of the time you don't run into that type of stuff. Um, sometimes you never know what might happen, but in general, that's what that's the thinking behind proofing to high level distractions. They improve your dog's confidence. They help them continue to focus on the task of weaving no matter what's going on around them and no matter what's happening in the environment. So here's some examples that hopefully will inspire you for your distraction training. All right, so first, a pre-placed reward that is not at the end of the poles, but next to the poles, where the dog has to weave past it, that in and of itself can be super distracting. 
And so a great way to train. And then if it goes well, we gradually increase the challenge. So we keep them in the game of learning by rather than repeating the same thing, we make it just a little bit harder. So that reward was slightly closer to the weaves. And now, okay, let's shake the toy. And can the dog continue focusing on the task? Now, if the dog comes out of the weaves, then we go back to using those little aids like guide wires, nets, or just six poles or open channels so that we can help the dog to learn. Now, again, here now we're throwing toys everywhere, even more challenging. So you can keep on raising that level um, and helping your dog to become super good at weaves. And then you can always trust your weaves when you're competing. Can you move through the weave poles and have your dog continue weaving? Can you have someone else do that, for example? All different ways that we can just keep raising the skill and in, in ways that feel, again, fun. So you're going to be really proud of your dog when they do this. You're going to let them know with your um, with uh, smiling and praising them in a way that they really like. Um, and we treat it like, hey, this is a fun little challenge. Can you do it? Oh, you can. You're amazing. And you have that kind of like enthusiasm. And then they will too. And it won't feel hard to them. It's just a little puzzle you're doing. Stop your motion. Like I said, like sometimes our, our movement is not as smooth as we want it to be when we're doing handling. We want them to still finish the weaves if something happens, like you take a bad step. Um, so challenge yourself to think of what are the ways that you can add distractions to your weave pole training. Oh, actually, let's come back to that video in a moment. I'll start here first. Distance, the final step of our five steps today. Um, and the one too that once you achieve it, like it's really cool. Uh, and it looks really cool. Everybody's really proud. And it, it also can feel a bit, I think, intimidating to train distance or to move away from the poles. People worry that the dog will come out. But if you train it from foundations, much, much easier. As you train poles, use your nets, guide wires, and reward timing. Because those, those rules are the same when you're adding distance. Reward placement and timing, same thing. Training um, nets and guide wires, like we saw in that example with that small um, Jack Russell puppy and the handler that was um, at a distance, do, they work the same way. You can gradually add distance. So at first you are maybe three feet from the poles and then six and so on, um, helping your dog to understand little by little. That's another way that you can approach that. Um, the rules of handling entrances and exits are the same as well. So that means you can actually still do versions of grab to weaves, even if you're far away from the pole. So lifting, for example, the opposite arm to focus the chest laser to the entrance works even if you're not right up at the entry. And you'll see examples of that um, in the follow-up emails to this webinar. Um, so we can help the dog in all those ways. And so here now I will show you an example that you can start to add a little bit of distance skill with an, a layer that isn't, I mean, it might look a little bit challenging, but um, it's a good place to start because it's jumps between you. The dog can see, still see you and you're not actually that far away from the poles, right? So just adding a couple of angle jumps once your dog understands entries. Now, if your dog doesn't make the entry, guide wires. If they don't hold the exit, put net, guide wires there too. Use a pre-placed reward. And then we can advance to all kinds of other different layers and distance. And once we achieve that, then we we poles always will feel easy to you and your dog when you're competing because you know what they can do and that's a really a really great feeling and also i think we get really proud of them when they do it okay so and here you can see how much tulia keeps the connection um, she's in position there to handle the next line before the dog exits the poles and then here now a more advanced version of layering where we add the tunnel and the dog walk where the dog can't see you as much so you can kind of work your way up just by adding in little obstacles um, as you go along okay so that's distance introduction and finally, a few a few tips to remember. So one, we've been mentioning this along, but I think it really bears repeating, which is teach your dog to love the weaves. If they think weave poles are the funnest thing ever, then they are going to want to do it. And if they want to do it, they go fast. Um, independence is easier to teach. And so that comes back to handler attitude and enthusiasm first. So enjoy the weave pole training yourself to treat it like a little, a little game that you play with your dog um, every day. Remember, go back to foundations. It's often the easiest way to teach those skills that um, can feel kind of challenging, like re um, entries and distance and distraction. If we teach them in foundations, then it's much easier later. 
um, and really put the time in. Now, when you're doing training, short sessions, you know, five minutes, we don't want it to be too, too much, but it's really worthwhile. And this advice comes from Yanita as well, to take three months to train, fully train weaves, then to spend six years avoiding different challenges. So put the time in, and then you'll find before you know it that you have weaves that you are really, really proud of. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this presentation today. Be on the lookout for the follow up emails. We'll be taking deep dives into each of these topics. And now we will um, wrap up today's webinar. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you in future webinars up and coming. All right, have a great rest of the day or evening and I will see all of you soon. Bye.